Hi everyone, welcome to Geometry. Today we're going to talk about the law of cosines. This is lesson 8-4. In this lesson, we'll be able to use the law of cosines to solve problems. So last lesson, we talked about law of sines. This lesson is about cosines, and it's very similar to law of sines, but we're going to deal with cosines. So let's look at explore and reason. Use triangle ABC to answer the questions. So we got a triangle here, and we have some information shown. Part A, write equations for the side lengths of triangle ABC and CBD using the Pythagorean theorem. So using the Pythagorean theorem, what is the Pythagorean theorem? It's when you have a triangle with a right triangle and you have sides A, B, and C, your hypotenuse is C, your hypotenuse square is equal to A square plus B square, okay? So using that, we're gonna write equations for ABC and CBD. So the two triangles that are split apart from ACD, okay? And so triangle ABC, you're gonna have hypotenuse. This is hypotenuse. 10 square is equal to X square plus H square. Yeah, and triangle CBD, is, this is a semicolon, by the way. And that's the, that's the hypotenuse, that's the hypotenuse. Those are the hypotenuses of our two triangles here. So 14 square should equal to 11 square plus H square, okay? Part B, use a system of equations to solve for X. So we're gonna use this um, system of equation just means you have more than one equation to solve for it, um, to use it uh, to solve for x. So how can we figure it out? Well, we have repeating variables here. First of all, so part B, I'm going to use a different color, blue one. First of all, the second equation has H in it. So if we know what H is, so whatever expression it is, we can substitute into the first equation and solve for X, right? So first let's solve for H. So H square is uh, going to be 14 square minus 11 square, right? So H should be square root of 14 square minus 11 square, okay? Or actually, we don't need to even solve for h because h squared is 14 squared minus 11 squared. So we know using this equation then, 10 squared is equal to x squared plus h squared, which is 14 squared minus 11 squared, okay? And solving for x, we get, uh, where should I write? Um, So solving for x, we get 10 squared minus 14 squared plus 11 squared is equal to x squared, okay? So x is equal to square root of all that. 10 squared minus 14 squared plus 11 squared. And that's going to be 100 minus 14 squared. is 196 plus 11 square is 121. And so wait, 100 minus 196 plus 121 is 25. So X is square root 25. And what is square root of 25? It's five. So X is a good number five. Good, easy number five, okay? So part C, how can you use the information you found to determine the measure of angle A? Okay, now we figured out what X is, X is five. So using that, how could we figure out the angle A? We know X is five and cosine of angle A is five over 10. That is our ratio, right? Using the inverse cosine, we can figure out the angle um, angle A. So let's write that down. Now that there is a number that 
value for x, we can find cosine a is equal to 5 over 10, which is cosine a is equal to 0 0.5, okay, or 1 over 2. And then find the inverse cosine of 0 0.5. At 60 degrees. Measure of angle. Okay, I'm going to stop there and then say so. Measure of angle A is going to be 60 degrees. Okay. All right, so in this lesson, uh, the essential question is how can the law of cosines be used to determine side lengths and angle measures of acute and obtuse triangles? Do you remember what acute and obtuse triangles are? The right angle is a 90 degrees. Acute angles are angles that are smaller than 90 degrees and obtuse angle is angles that are greater than 90 degrees. <coughs> okay, so. Acute triangles might look like this. Obtuse triangle might look like this, where you have angles that are greater than 90 degrees, angles that are smaller than 90 degrees, okay? So example one, develop the law of cosines with trigonometry. Triangle ABC is not a right triangle, okay? How can you use a cosine ratio to write an equation relating the side lengths A, B, and C? You know this is not a right triangle. So using our um, trigonometry, can we figure out some ratios? So you can construct the altitude from A. This is very similar to the sign, um, where the example one of the last lesson, remember? So we're gonna construct the altitude from A so that it's perpendicular to the opposite side, which is BC. So AD intersects BC at point D. It doesn't mean it bisects. Intersect means it just goes through, but it's gonna be a perpendicular line by the definition of altitude, okay? We're gonna let DC equals X, BD equals A minus X because BC, the whole thing is A. So A minus X is BD, okay? We're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem for a triangle A, B, and D and say, C squared, that's hypotenuse, is equal to A minus X parentheses squared. If you don't parenthesize, you're only gonna square X and that is not correct. You need to square the whole thing, okay? Plus H squared. We're gonna start with that. And then we're gonna, we're gonna solve, um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, solve for for c square, and so multiply out the a minus x square. If you multiply a minus x twice, you're gonna use the distributed property to distribute it out and get oh a square minus a times x, uh, a times minus x. Okay, so that's gonna be positive AX and then times negative X times A and then minus X times negative X. So that's gonna be A square, okay? Um, positive AX and then negative, what is this? Negative AX and then positive X square, okay? So that means you have you have canceled out the a wait did you a square and then a x and then oh okay so that's not negative i'm so sorry um that's gonna be positive a so that's positive a times negative x yeah so that's gonna be negative ax and negative AX, if you add them together, that's gonna be A squared minus two AX plus X squared. So then, yeah, you multiply it out and then 
a minus x squared becomes this. Then you have plus h squared. And then you're gonna you're gonna combine like terms if you can. Okay, if you can't, um, wait, um, you can't. Let's see if you can substitute anything. So x squared minus h squared is what? If you look at this triangle, b squared is equal to h squared plus x squared. So x squared plus h squared is going to be b squared. So you can substitute this part now into b squared. I know it's a little bit confusing. Like what? I thought we were going to distribute it out. Yeah, we're done distributing out. And if you don't have any like terms, maybe look for substitution that you could make um, the equation a little bit simpler, okay? And then you substitute b squared using the other triangle. And then since cosine c is equal to x over b, right? Cosine c is x over b. You can say that x is equal to b cosine c. And so you can substitute x into 2ab times cosine c. We're just, we're just substituting this x into b cosine c, okay? Why do we want that? We'll see, okay? And then that c squared is basically two squared, I mean, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. I know it looks long and it is not, it is not, very similar to our last expression, our answers for cos the law of sines, but this is basically law of cosines. So you're going to use law of cosines if you can't use law of sines, because obviously it's easier to use law of sines because it's just easier to remember um, using proportions, right? So thus, given side lengths and A and B of a triangle and the included angle measure. So if you have this, this specific given information, A and B of a triangle and the included angle measure, okay? Um, then, so if you have this, this and the included angle, so C, so if you're given these, then you really need to use log cosines you can just use log cosines instead of doing solving step-by-step uh, step for law of sines and then doing it again. You know, it might be easier to use the law of sines, the law of cosines, okay? You can find the length of C of the third side um, by taking the square root of the expression on the right side of the equation, okay? But if you want to solve for C using this given information, using the um, law of sines, what do you have to do? First, you need to figure out angle A, right? Because that's your given information. And then using that, um, and then using that, you can use this proportion versus C and the other other uh, side C. So if you use law of sines, it's gonna take multiple steps, whereas law of cosines, you can directly plug it in all the, all the information you have, and that will give you C directly, okay? But you're actually doing like the same, similar kind of steps, um, and you'll get the same answer whether or not you use law of sines or cosines, but law of sines, uh, may not always be the easiest or the fastest way to solve it, okay? So this is another law that you can use. So try number one, use the same method as an example one to write equations for a squared using cosine a and b squared using cosine b. So this is for co uh, c squared, right? We're gonna use a squared is equal, we're gonna solve for a squared and we're gonna solve for b squared using cosine a and b. So notice, C squared includes cosine C, the angle opposite to, to itself. And then A squared is gonna use cosine A, B squared is gonna use cosine B, okay? 
So using the same thing, um, even if you don't necessarily go over the same steps, you can basically guess and say, oh, a square might be the other two sides square minus two a b cosine a, right? And that is that is actually right. So b squared plus c squared minus two b c cosine a is for a squared if you go through the same process. And c squared is going to equal to wait, we did c squared. I'm sorry. Let's do b squared. So what is b squared going to be? The other squares, a squared plus c squares, and then subtract two times ac, and then cosine b, okay? All right, let's look at the next page. So the concept, here's the law of cosines. For any triangle ABC, the law of cosines relates the cosine of each triangle to the side lengths of the triangle. So the law of cosines relates each angle to the side lengths of the triangle. So if you have two given lengths and one included angle, it's, it's easier to use law of sine. Okay, so a squared, b squared, c squares are equal to the other two lengths squared, then minus two times the other two lengths times cosine of the opposite angle. All right, example two, use a lot of signs to find a side length. So a lot of cosines. So what is bc to the nearest tenth? So we have an angle the included angle for A, B, and A, C. This is exactly what we want in order to use law of cosines. So this is gonna be A, length A, right? So length A should, A squared should be equal to length B squared plus C squared minus two B, C cosine angle A, okay? Using the law of cosines. Using that, we're going to plug in all the information that we know we don't know a that's what we're supposed to figure out so that's gonna be b and that's gonna be c in this case so b is 10 squared plus c is 8 squared minus 2 times b 8 times c 10 times cosine a cosine 57 so we have all the numbers here so just plug it into your calculator and then um, and then you're gonna square root the whole thing in order to get A. So square root the whole thing. 10 squared plus eight squared minus two times eight times 10 cosine 57. In your calculator, you're going to put parentheses for this one or else it's just gonna subtract two. Okay, so make sure you put parentheses uh, for the whole thing here so that it subtracts the whole thing. Okay, the multiplication. Um, yeah. All right, so A should be about 8.8. .8. All right, see if you can do try number two, A and B by yourself. What is D, E using the law of cosines? What is G, H using the law of cosines? Notice you have two sides that are given, side lengths that are given, and the included angle that's given. That is when you use the law of cosines, okay? So see if you can um, figure it out by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? All right, 2A, what is DE? So using the law of sines, that's gonna, the law of cosine, sorry. That could be F because that's angle F and that could be E, that could be D. Even if you have different letters, can you still use it? Yeah, it works in the same way. So F square is going to be the other side, H squared, sum of the other sides, E squared plus D squared minus two times E and D, and then cosine the opposite angle F, okay? And so using that, your F square is going to be six squared plus eight squared minus two times six times eight times cosine 62 degrees. 
So um, in your calculator, in order to get F, you need to square root the whole thing. So square root six squared plus eight squared minus two times six times eight times cosine 62 squared. Okay, so let me plug it in. Um, square root six square plus eight square minus two times six times eight times cosine 62 degrees is going to be about 7.411. So for my calculator, I don't really need to put parentheses. So if you look at my calculator, I don't really need to put parentheses, but some calculators, you need to be super exact. Um, so if you don't have the same calculator as mine, you might have to put parentheses on the, uh, after the negative sign, after the subtraction sign so that you're subtracting the whole two times six times eight times cosine 12, okay? So if you, if you click that um, and make sure your cosine angle is in degree mode, otherwise it might be in radian mode where you will get a different answer. So make sure you have those settings ready. And that's gonna be equal to 7.411, 526831. And so rounding up, you can say about VE is about 7.4, okay? And in the same way, GH is going to be about 24.8, okay? All right, let's look at example three. Use the law of cosines to find an angle measure. The optimal, the optimal tilt for a Keenan solar panel is between 58 degrees and 60 degrees. So that's the ideal tilt to the horizontal. Has Keenan placed his solar panel at an optimal angle? Okay, so um, we don't know the angle of the tilt, but given the information, we can figure it out, right? Yeah. So um, write an equation using the law of cosines. We're going to use the law of cosines in this case as well. And then use the inverse cosine to find the measure of P. That is uh, the angle that we're looking for. So using that, we're going to need all the sides. Okay. So that is P, that is side R, and then that is side Q. So we know that using cosine p, we're gonna have p squared equal to q squared plus r squared minus two times q r cosine p, angle p. And we know all the lengths for p, q, r. So we're gonna use inverse cosine to figure out the angle p, okay? And so this is the strategy, plug in all the information we know, 19 squared is equal to 18 squared plus 20 squared minus two times 18 times 20 times cosine P. And then solving for cosine P is your first step, okay? Don't solve for P, cosine P is the same thing. Like you cannot separate cosine and P, okay? Cosine P is one number. So solve for, solve for cosine P. And then um, you will get about 0 0.5042. So plug that into your calculator. Inverse cosine. So this means cosine inverse of 0 0.5042 will give you the angle P. Okay. And that's going to be about 59.72 degrees. So Keenan, is that between 58 and 60? Yeah, so he has placed his solar panel at an optimal angle. That is the answer. So looking at the next page, look at try number three, A and B. Um, using the same uh, process, you have the same given information. You have all three uh, side lengths given. What is the angle of X? So in that case, you're going to use four squares equal to whatever, 
Okay, so use Love's cosines to figure out angles X and P in these questions. See if you can do it by yourself and come back when you are ready. Okay, are you ready? All right, let's see if you got it correct. If you have your answers. Okay, so what is measure of angle X? Use the law of cosines. Um, in order to figure that out, you're gonna use all the side lengths, all the given information. So that could be side X, that could be side Y, that could be side Z. So remember, all the sides are gonna be opposite of the angle, okay? Um, okay, so using that law of cosine says whatever is opposite of your angle squared is equal to the other side, okay? The Z squared, plus y squared, and you're gonna subtract two times zy, the other side, and then co times cosine of the opposite angle, x, okay? So using that information, we're, we have four square is equal to seven square plus six square minus two times seven times six times cosine x. And so, we're gonna, we're gonna simplify. 16 is equal to 49 plus 36 minus 14 times six is 84, 84 cosine X. So you're gonna have 16 minus 49 minus 36 um, is equal to negative 84 cosine X. And so 16 minus 49, minus 36 is negative 69 divided by negative 84 is equal to cosine x. And so 69 divided by 84 is gonna be positive. So cosine x is equal to positive 0 0.8214285714 dot dot dot. Note that this is not your answer. Cosine x is 0 0.82, but what are you figuring out? Uh, the measure of angle X. So in order to get the measure of angle X, you need to plug it in the inverse cosine. So inverse cosine 0 0.82143 is going to be about, um, so let's see, shift cosine is inverse cosine 0 0.82143 is going to be 30, 4.7718. So it's going to be about um, 34, 34.7, or we can say 34.8 degrees. Okay. All right. What about measure of angle P? Using the same law law of cosines we can say 13 square wait is equal to so your equation that you needed to set up is 13 square is equal to 11 square so it's 8 square minus 2 times 11 times 8 times cosine p okay and then solving for that you should have measure of angle p is approximately 84.8 degrees. All right, let's look at our application problem. Example four, use the law of cosines to solve a problem. The district ranger wants to build a new ranger station at the location of the fire tower because it would be closer to Bald Mountain than the old station is. Is the district ranger correct? Explain. Mm. Um, do you think it'd be closer to Bald Mountain than the old station is? Uh, let's see, this is the fire tower. And they want to build a new ranger here at the, at the fire tower because it'd be closer to the Bald Mountain. So we want to see if the distance from here to there is smaller than the original ranger station, 2.1 mile. Is it smaller than 2.1 mile? Is it farther away if then, if it's farther away, then it's not, and obviously like it's gonna be greater, if it's greater than 2.1 miles, then obviously it's not closer, okay? 
Okay, so we want to figure that distance out. And we know that the angle um, from the ranger station to the ball mountain and the fire tower would make 49 degrees angle. So using the law of cosines, if you have two sides and they include an angle, then you can easily figure out the opposite side because the opposite side x is going to be x squared is equal to um, 2.1 squared plus 1.4 squared plus, well, minus two times 2.1 times 1.4 cosine 49 degrees. And solving for x, you just have to plug it into your um, calculator and it's gonna be about 1.6. So is that closer than 2.1 miles? Yes, it is closer. So the distance from the fire tower to Ball Mountain is about 1.6 miles. So the district ranger is correct that the new, this is the answer, that the new station at the fire tower would be closer. Okay, try number four, an example four. What is the angle that the new path forms with the old path at Bald Mountain? So what is the angle that the new path um, forms with the old path at Bald Mountain. So what is this angle? Okay, this is the old path and this is the new path. So what is the angle that's formed between old and new paths? The angle here, you can use the law of cosines again to figure it out. You can use the law of sines at this point, but use the law of cosines for you to practice, okay? So you know, in order to get that angle, you need to use cosine of this angle. So you can let that angle be A and then say, oh, 1.4 squared is equal to 2.1 squared plus whatever you figured out, right? Just now squared minus two times 2.1 and the new distance um, times cosine A and then use the inverse cosine. Okay, see if you can figure that out by yourself. I basically just told you, but see if you can do it by yourself and let's see if, uh, if you got it right. Okay, are you ready to check answers? Okay, so for this one, if you use 1.6, that's okay, but just please keep in habit that you're going to use the exact value as possible. So instead of using 1.6 as your, as your length here, it's better if you use more exact. So BC is actually, it's actually gonna be square root of 2.512. Even 2.512 is kind of rounded up, right? So that's gonna be approximately 1.58492902, so dot, dot, dot. So if you can include more digits, the more the better when you're calculating it. And at the end, you can round up your answers, but always make a habit that you're, that you're using the exact values while you're calculating, okay? So the best answer, uh, let's go over the steps first, okay? So what is the angle that this forms? So using the law of cosines, you're gonna say, 1.4 square, um, 1.4 square is equal to 2.1 square plus square root 2.512 square, which is just 2.512 minus 2ac, so like 2.1 times um, square root 2.512 cosine of um, A. Okay, let me write that again neatly so that it's in one line. 1.4 squared, 2.1 squared, plus square 2.512 squared minus two times 2.1 times square root 2.512 and then cosine A. I know it looks a little bit messy, but everything would be done in calculator, so you don't even have to deal with a lot of messy numbers. Just make sure you're plugging in correctly. Okay, so 1.4 square minus 2.1 square minus square root, wait, we're gonna, 
We're going to simplify this and say square root and square, they cancel each other out. Minus 2.512 is equal to negative 2 times 2.1 times square root 2.512 times cosine A. And then we can say we can we're going to divide everything by that. So 1.4 squared minus 2.1 squared minus 2.512, all divided by, so in your calculator, you need to put parentheses for the numerator, all divided by negative 2 times 2.1 times square root 2.512 um, is equal to cosine A, which means your A is equal to inverse cosine of all that. Ooh. So yeah, if you didn't simplify, you're gonna have to just plug in all that, plug all that in into your calculator at the same time, and that's fine. Minus 2.512 parentheses, and divide by negative two times 2.1. So you can you also need to put parentheses here times square root 2.512, the whole thing, or else it's not going to divide by the whole thing. And that's going to be, um, that's going to be approximately 41.8 degrees. So if you do not use square root 2.512 and you just use 1.6, your answer would probably be approximately 41.3 degrees but it is better to use, it is more exact to use um, the more accurate and more exact answers if possible. So yeah, if your questions are related like this, then do not use the rounded up answer uh, when you're solving, when you're calculating for another information. So if you can, use the information you have. So BC is really square root 2.512. So before you round it up, you're going to use that, okay? Or if you want to round it up, maybe use more digits and it's going to be more exact, okay? All right, so, but the answer could be um, 41.3 degrees and that's, that's acceptable. It's not the best answer. It's not the most accurate answer, okay? So the angle, the best answer would be 41.3 degrees. All right, so that was law of cosines. How was that? It was definitely longer to remember than law of sines, but this also tells you the relationship between each angle to the side lengths of the triangle. So this works for any type of triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle either, okay? So this is the beautiful thing about law of cosines and sines. The triangles don't need to be a right triangle in order to work. For the trigonometry, for trigonometries, you do need a right triangle, but for any triangle, you can use law of cosines and sines. So you could still use trigonometry, but it needs to follow certain rules like these. Okay. So law of cosines again, your um, opposite side length square of your angle that you're trying to get is going to equal to the other sides, the sum of other sides squared each minus two times the other sides multiplied by each other times cosine of that angle. Okay, that was law of cosines guys. And that was the end of lesson 8-4. We have the last lesson coming up for this topic next lesson. So our last lesson will be about problem solving with trigonometry. We'll combine everything we learned in this topic about trigonometry and see how we can problem solve using all the information and the concepts that we learned in this topic. All right. I'm excited to, to apply all that in the next lesson. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.